page Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Two of them's doing good. The rest of you can catch on here in a minute. Blessed. Before we get into it, has anybody got us a, a, a prayer request tonight? Do you remember that? Remember that. I still ask that you remember my sister. I got to visit with her this past week. Some, some days she was good, some days she wasn't. I just pray that God would look kindly on her. Amen. Remember that. Remember my brother-in-law. He just hanging on. I know he's still lost to God. Amen. Remember that. Bill's wife, Carolyn, she lost a family member and passed away, so... Pray for them. Also pray for Danielle's uh, cousin uh, lost a child. So pray for them. Do you remember that baby? Anyone else?
you come to the altar, there's, there's somebody you invited that didn't, didn't quite make it, whatever it might be. Maybe they got sick. Uh, maybe at last minute they talked herself out of coming, but for whatever reason, they didn't come at homecoming. But they still got breath. They still got hope, right? Amen. Amen. So Amen. let's don't forget that. Let's don't give up. Amen. So at this time, has anybody got any unspoken? Yeah. All around the house. If you will, the ones that can will come around. And I'll ask Brother Richard if he'll lead us in prayer. Has anybody got a song or a testimony? I want to thank God for giving us traveling mercies this last week. You know, to be with my sister. And you never know whenever, it might be the last moment you get to see someone. It's true. And for in the safety down the interstate, it stormed so hard it shook me and I was both in the car. Goodness. Thunder over us, just shook the whole car. Goodness. It wrecks all over interstate cars. I just planned and I just praise God for bringing us Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? I want to thank you for all you've done for me. You've been a blessing to me. Thank you for saving me. Amen. I thank God for saving my soul and for the service Sunday. I'm thankful for Danny and Nathan being Amen. here. Amen. 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 I looked understood. over at one time and Danny had tears rolling down his face and I know the Lord was dealing with him. Amen. He 
you can take and make some comments when we got home, you know, about what his preacher Josh was and different things. And so I know he was listening. Amen. I watched them both. But yeah. I just pray that they'll continue to come back with me. And Amen. the Lord will just speak to their hearts that they can be in here and, and get back right with the Lord. Amen. I thought a lot about Danny because he used to take them boys camping and stuff when, when they was smaller. So uh, I knew I knew that Josh would connect with him. So just keep praying for him. Anybody else? I'm thankful that God took me back to an old workplace. Um, I left for what I thought was a better opportunity for about a year and a half, and I've been back since April. And it's hard to find a workplace where you're not just co-workers but your family. Mm -hmm. And being in that positive, uplifting work environment and being around other Christians that are there to lift you up when you're having a bad day, there's nothing like it. That's right. And I know that yeah. God has put me right where I'm meant to be. Praise God. I've been back three months and I've had a promotion now and it's just I had a rough day today and every single one of them was there to let me know that they were praying for me and if I did anything, do not hesitate. So yeah. there's nothing like it. get older and they, they move off especially as a dad sometimes as a mom you know I ain't gonna speak for every family but as a dad you you don't get to talk to the kids a whole lot and today I've got to see one daughter and I got to talk to the other twice they may not know how much that means to me but it means a lot Praise God. just to, for them to call and want to tell you how their day goes Amen. they didn't call mom they called me <laughs> that made me feel good she, she said they didn't even want to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. But it, it felt good. Yes, it yes. made my day. And they may never know how much that meant to me, but that's what God did for me today. Right. What did He do for you today? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank Him for His blessings and for saving me and Amen. just letting Him know I love Him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody else? Bless you, Jerry. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? I don't want to rob you of an opportunity, but at the same time, we're not going to we're not going to just hang around. We'll bring the preacher on if you ain't got nothing. I thank God for the Lord protecting me and Shannon. I mean, and not just the just all of us, but the Lord protecting me and Shannon and the Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 
Anybody else been blessed today? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Sure has. Been blessed beyond measure today. Can't thank God enough for blessing. Staking your house today? No. Blessed. Blessed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the best kind. Amen. 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 They make good pancakes too. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. I just want to thank God for everything He does for me. And, hey, you know, we take a lot of stuff for granted down here below, but uh, God, as you know, he, uh, I've had cataracts surgery on both eyes now, and God has uh, just took care of it and uh, washed over the surgeon's hands it, as He done it. But, boy, what a blessing it is now to get up there and just look back through the congregation and can they tell who everybody is. I, I could tell where everybody said that, but I couldn't see his faces clearly. But uh, thank God now I, I can see clearly. Yeah. And, and, uh, I give God all, all the, the glory for it and the, the praise for it. And I, I, was, I, was, I was telling them I was 10% above being legally blind enough to drive and that Randy and Dwayne said we rode over to revival with you. <laughs> but, but God kept us safe and I, I, I say uh, what a joy it is and what a beautiful beautiful creation he has created. Amen. 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 <laughs> Fellas, I rode with him for years. It didn't just happen. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anybody else? Come on, bro. No. I'll have to say this for Wayne. I thought he was just a... I thought he was a bad driver, to be honest. But he wasn't. He's the best blind driver I ever rode with. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, it didn't slow him down none, did it, Randy? No. No, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, when, when I was a kid, I couldn't hardly see anything. Didn't even know there's stars in the sky. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a blessing when you, when you can see. A blessing when you can hear. A blessing when you can walk. Uh, we're, we're blessed beyond measure. God's been really good to us, hasn't he? And uh, we were able to come tonight and, and lift, his, lift his sweet name. And I can't think of anything, I can't think of anything better and I can't think of a place I'd rather be 
been in the house of God tonight and be with God's people and hear the testimonies and even hear the prayer requests. Uh, we all have needs, and uh, but when we when we share those burdens with one another, they get a little lighter for each of us, don't they? And uh, I can't always pick something up by myself anymore, but uh, but I can get help, can I? I can get help, and uh, and and that's a, that's a literal too, as well as spiritual, but. I thank God for His mercy and grace and appreciate the Lord tonight. And we want to look in the, 12, in the 11th chapter of Matthew. And if you'll turn there, please, for just a few moments. If I can see. The 11th chapter of Matthew, the 25th verse. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and, uh, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neath, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Thank the Lord. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is is light. Brother Richard, will you lead us in prayer, please? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, yes. Amen. When we think of yokes and, and burdens, uh, we've got a lot in this life, don't we? Uh, things that burden us down, things that breaks our heart, things that hurt, things that are heavy uh, to be carried. Uh, a yoke, when we think of a yoke, it's a, like a yoke of oxen. And... If we're yoked together, now God, through the Word, says for us not to be unequally yoked. Uh, if you got a big, strong ox and a little weak one, and you put them together, uh, the, the big one's going to get tired of carrying the little one after a while, right? It's, it's, you got to be equally, equally yoked. And God give us a church where we can come together as one body, and 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 lift each other's burdens, right? So, but Jesus is saying here, he said, "Take my my yoke upon you, and and learn of me." And then he says, "I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light." When. Uh, I think about all the things that that we don't want to be yoked to, and I think about all the things that we don't want to be burdened down with, and then isn't it something that Jesus uses this differently? He uses it as his yoke is easy, and the burden of him is, is light. Uh, when we take Jesus as our personal Savior, there's more to it than what we do on the altar. That's the beginning. That's where we ask Christ into our life, and then we begin to learn and, and, and understand more of what we're supposed to do, what we're called to do, uh, to be 
uh, uh, yoked with him. When we're, when we're yoked with Christ, when we're taken uh, under his authority, a lot of people don't like that word authority, but the Bible teaches us to be under his authority, under his lordship. And I found this out. It's not so God can just tell us what to do. It's not so God can just ruin our fun. But what it is, God has given us a blessing by being under his authority. Everything I've ever done for God has been a blessing to me. Everything I've ever done in the service of Christ, I've received a bigger blessing than I, than I gave. I promise you that. God is always and always will bless those that love him and bless those that will live for him and bless those who will yield to his authority. Now, we're living in a world today where folks are rebellious, but it's no different. It's, it's always been that way. In the Old Testament, it talks about their, their heads will be as adamant, hard-headed. That's what that means. Adamant's a hard stone. Their, their faces will be against you, but he, he tells him to preach the word anyway. If there's not that they're mad at you, they, they, they hate me, God has said, and that's paraphrasing, of course. But when we accept Jesus Christ and submit to his authority, our life changes. Amen. Amen. Our life changes. We find out, and when I got saved, I felt like when I, I felt like a, you'd lifted a house off of me. Amen. I felt like you'd have lifted you lifted something that I was bowed down trying to carry for so long, didn't even know it was there. I didn't know how burdened down I was. I didn't know how knocked down I was. I didn't know how, how much sin was taking a toll, a toll on me until Christ lifted it off. And when I give my life to Jesus and he lifted that burden of sin, I, I realized right then it's wonderful to live for Jesus. And it's wonderful to have your sins blotted out because that's what it was. It was the weight of sin and it was the weight of the world. It was the weight of things that I'd done to myself. God didn't force me to do anything wrong. And, and to be honest about it, it, the devil didn't have to talk me into a lot of it. I chose it myself. I chose it myself. I was like most everybody else. The, whatever, whatever made the flesh happy was, was, was what I wanted to be a part of. But when I met Jesus, I realized true happiness... And true joy and true peace comes from the inside. It, it don't come by things of the flesh because they get burdensome. It don't, it don't come by the things of the flesh because it gets too heavy for us. And, and I'll be honest about it, and you probably know this too, the things of the flesh will bring shame to you. And it'll bring shame to your life. And it'll bring shame to your, your family. The old lie of the devil that you're not hurting anybody but yourself is a lie. Right. Probably what he told Eve. Uh, well, you, you ain't hurting yourself. You ain't hurting nobody but yourself. What's it matter? Well, it does matter. It does matter. And when we, when we are burdened down by sin, we are hurting other people. Right. We're, hurt, we're hurting our family. We're hurting. We're hurting our, uh, our 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 wives, our husbands, our our mamas, our daddies. It, it does bring pain and it does affect them. But when Jesus comes into our life, it has a different effect on us. It has a different effect on our families. I remember, I remember when I felt the true weight of Christianity. Now, I was, I was certainly excited to be saved. I was certainly excited to have my sin uh, lifted off of me. But when I went to the creek and was baptized, all of a sudden I, I, I come up out of the water and I looked up on a bridge there next to the creek and there was my mama, there was my wife, there was my, there was my daddy. And I felt, I felt the weight of what Christianity is. Because the first thing I thought of was now, boy, you, you've, made this, you've made this step in, in being baptized. Now you're going to have to live it in front of them. Now, what would have happened to them if I hadn't lived in front of them? 
Do you think my wife would have ever got saved? I don't know if she would or not. I don't know if mom would. I don't know if dad would. I don't know. But, I, but, but I'll tell you something. The, 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 the weight that I felt of Christianity, it was a good weight. It was not just a weight of, boy, I'm in, I've got to do things right now, but it was a weight of God give me joy in my heart. And it was a weight of sharing that joy. God put love in my heart, and it was a, it was a weight of sharing the love of God. And I want to say, I want to tell you this too. I had a weight of, well, I want to see everybody get saved. And I thought, boy, when I get to work Monday morning, I, all I have to do is show up with this smile on my face that you can wipe off with a with a dishcloth. I don't guess at the time. I just show them up, and sh uh, show up, and show them how happy I am. Tell them about Jesus. They'll fall on their knees everywhere in this place. I was so disappointed because I thought surely what I feel would 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 reach out to them. Surely what I feel inside I can convey. But you know what I found out? It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now I tell you something. There's a difference in you when you get born again. God don't just take a, uh, uh, take a Brillo pad and, and scrub the mud off of us, does he? No, he washes us clean as white as snow, and it's, on the, and it's on the inside, and then it shows up on the outside. Jamie, I don't care if them boys is clean or dirty. You bring them on to church. I've, I've had these same clothes on since 4.30 this morning, so they ain't got nothing on me, Okay. But is that what I'm talking about? No. God does something on the inside. You ever heard the, the, the little uh, uh, story about the little lost boy and, and how a man feeds him and how a man, and, and, I, and, he said, and the man kept saying John 3.16 to him every time he, or maybe as a woman done something nice for him and, 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 and he eventually uh, told, him, told him about Jesus and he said, John 3, 16, I don't know what it means, but it sure makes a lost boy feel saved. And I'll tell you something. I felt like I come in out of the wilderness when I got saved. I felt like I come from a dark place and it was getting darker. A dungeon, amen, that was, that was just uh, impaling me and, and pulling me in further and further in. But when I met Jesus, I, I gained his burden and lost the burden of sin. Amen. And I found this out. His burden is light. His yoke is easy. When you yoke yourself up to Jesus, I was thinking about this coming down the road. He, uh, he, it, ain't, it ain't him that don't carry his weight, amen? He'll, he'll tote his weight, and then he'll tote yours, and then he'll tote you too. When, they put, when, when you get in a yoke with Jesus, he's carrying it all. He's carrying his part, your part, and you all at the same time. And I'll tell you something, he don't mind. He's, he's a, he loves us so much, he, he'll carry every burden that we ever have. He'll, if we'll carry it to him, he'll carry it, won't he? That's the kind of God we serve. The burden of sin, let me tell you about the burden of sin. You're carrying it on your own. I, you can't come to me and say, preacher, help me carry this burden of sin. I can't, I can't carry your burden. I can't carry your sin. I can't carry the, 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 the wicked life that, that folks are in. I, I carried mine uh, too long myself, and I, I couldn't share it with anybody. There was nobody else could carry part of it except for a man named Jesus. And you know what my Bible says? That he nailed it to his cross. He took my burden and your burdens and all our sins and all our pains and all our troubles and all our trials and, and he carried it to the cross of Calvary and he bled and died to give us hope and everlasting life. Amen. And when you stand before God and, and, uh, then, and all your sin is gone, you're going to be glad Amen. that you was yoked with Jesus. My burden is light. Uh, a burden. What is the burden? Something heavy. Something, something heavy. Something, and, and it can be. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get. Uh, 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 I get. It's, it's not always a physical heaviness, is it? 
somebody with a broken heart is, is in bad shape. I know people that just, you think they're carrying the, the weight of the world uh, on their shoulders. And, but, and the only way out of that is Jesus. And I know we want to carry everybody else's pain. We want to carry, I'd, I'd love to see my family saved. I'd love to just be able to pick it up off of them and, and carry it to Jesus. But, but, but the fact of the matter is we have to carry it to Jesus on our own. We have to cry out to Jesus on our own. Now, we're supposed to pray for him, pray for conviction, pray for a touch of God. But the thing of it is, it'll take Jesus to, to lift those heavy burdens. It'll take Jesus. My yoke is easy. I was uh, over at Eugene's tire store uh, last week, and... Uh, and he was putting tires on an old Jeep, uh, Jamie's. And I looked up a hill, and there was a girl coming out there with a rope around her waist dragging a tar. I said, Eugene, come here. You got another customer coming in. <laughs> he said, they do that all the time. He said, they drag it over the hill, and then they turn around and they back up with it. Walk backwards dragging that tar. A few minutes later, here come another I said, boy, you're right. That's got a bigger tire than the first one had. And I thought, man, that's a lot to carry. And you know what, you know what, the, you know what I, th I thought about? It made my knees start hurting just watching them drag them tires, Randy. And I thought, man, that's a heavy burden. And they're, it's dry, I mean, dragging around along with them, and, it's, and they're choosing to do this. Nobody shackled them to that tire, nobody tied it to them. They done it on their own. They done it of their own free will. And their knees, they're paying for what? Yeah, they're paying somebody, they're paying to do it too, right? I mean, I'd like to have a job like that where I say, hey, <laughs> I'm gonna, you pay me and you can go cut cedars off that hill over there, yeah? And, I, and then I thought, later I thought, my goodness, is that not what we all did when we were in sin? We had it drag, we, we come this way and it's dragging behind us. We turn around and drag it the other way. And then as she said, we're, 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 paying, we're paying to do it. Sin costs me a lot. Sin ain't cheap. And, and I'll tell you this, salvation ain't cheap either, but, but God wants to pick up the tab for you. Yeah, I, I want Jesus to drag my tires, don't you? Yeah. And he will. We, all those burdens that we've drug around and drug around and drug around, I promise you, Jesus said my burden is light. When he's carried it, it don't make your knees hurt and your back hurt. And... Uh, I don't know, maybe they got mental problems too. I don't know, but I, maybe I did too. Cause I sure drug a, I sure chose to drag around a heavy weight for a long time. And, and I still got the, I still got sores from it and I still got scars from it. But I thank God one day Jesus, Jesus took sores on his back and he took scars in his hand and forgive me of all my sin. He said, take my yoke upon you. The, the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, they, they claimed to be godly. They claimed to have the answers. They claimed to have, here's the way to God. But, all, but, but the more they added was the more weight they just added on people. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do something else. You've got, and they had all, uh, you know, God started out Ten Commandments. Man, that man added a whole bunch more, hundreds more. The, the priesthood did add hundreds of them. And it seemed like when you read about them, a lot of them was to suit their own lusts. They decided, the priests, let me, let me give you one of the laws that they come up with, and you can decide for yourself, but uh, they come up with a law that if, uh, if, if your wife uh, disappointed you, you could put her away. 
And disappointed could mean anything from uh, she didn't fix up or right or she hurt my feelings, she embarrassed me. It was basically saying, well, I'm tired of her, I'll get rid of her. That's, that's, what, that's what religion will do to you as well. Religion don't, just don't want you. Religion just wants to have you around to uh, entertain when, and then wants rid of you when they're done with you. But that's not what Jesus done. There's a lot of heavy burdens that even the, 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 the religious crowd was adding on the people. But Jesus says, I come to set you free. I come, I come to cut you loose from that tire you're dragging around. I come to lift up your sin and carry it to a cross and not to just bring it up to you every once in a while. And that's what religion does. It ever so often, it'll bring it up. Here's what you used to be. Here's what you used to be. But my God don't bring it up no more. Amen. He casts it as far as the east is to the west, never to be remembered again. He don't just help you carry it. He gets rid of it for you. Amen. And you can have life and you can have peace and you can have joy and you can be free in Jesus Christ. The only way for this burden to be easy is if Jesus takes the burden for you. Living for Him is, and, and He calls it a burden, but, but it's an easy burden. It's a good burden. If we didn't have a burden for the lost, we'd never witness to nobody. If we didn't have a burden for the church, we'd never come. We didn't have a burden for the word. Uh, burden for the word. We'd we'd, uh, we'd get rid of the preacher just saying uh, 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 two or three hours a week. But the thing of it is, he's offering us something better. He's offering us something better. I was thinking when I watched him drag him tires. I was thinking I'd rather have these old slick tires and be driving around on that Jeep as dragging that good one that she <laughs> at that good one she's. She's dragging around. I don't understand that, but anyway. Uh, but it requires obedience. It requires self-denial. And that's okay. I didn't like me too good anyway. I'm glad to, I'm glad that Jesus puts me in my place. Amen. I'm glad the Holy Spirit puts me in my place. So we've got some things to get us, get us through. And it, right here's the first one, the Word of God. The Word of God... And the Spirit of God, He's there to guide you, right? The Word of God, well, the Word of God is a, a light into your path, a lamp into your a feet. That's what the Word of God is. And in the Spirit, He's there to, uh, to teach us. I was reading uh, the other night, I was reading the other night in the, in the book of Revelation, and I didn't understand the third of it. Well, boy, it was blessing me. To, I mean, it was blessing me. I said, well, praise God. I don't know exactly what that means, but it blesses me. I knew it's true. The Word of God will do that, and the Spirit will do that. <laughs> but, but the and I'll say this. You see people that, you see, well, I, I don't want to say this in a way that offends anybody, but if you see people that have been on drugs for years and years and years or just drunk and drunk and drunk and you can see the weight that sin is put on them you can see it and I'll tell this and for the glory of God a young lady and I know I've told it before a young lady that was coming to church and uh, give her life to the Lord and she was doing so good she'd been on drugs for years but but I mean, her whole complexion changed. She started putting on a little weight; didn't look like a skeleton anymore. And my goodness, just just became a beautiful, beautiful young lady. And then, then one day, she, one weekend, she went out with her old friends, and they got her yoked up to the that old tire again, Randy. I seen her six months later, six months later, and she was she was standing there. And didn't even know she was in the world. She didn't know me. She looked like she looked like I mean she looked like she had aged forty years. Her teeth had fallen out. That's what the world. That's what that's what the world give you. But Jesus gives you something way better. Way better. Yoke of love. The yoke of peace. The yoke of joy. The yoke of salvation. 
the burden of Christ is way better than the burden of sin. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this uh, time of Bible study that we can see. Lord, if we're saved, we, we've got it good. We've got it so good. We're so blessed. We're, we're headed to heaven. We're not going to hell. We're, we're, we've had the, uh, the, the things of sin taken away, and we praise you for that. Lord, I know, Jesus, there's not everybody saved. There's a lot of people in this world still dragging that old tire, still dragging that old tire. And I thank God that we can, we can cut it loose and be set free in Jesus. We love you and ask this. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Sister Missy come play us a song, if she would. And, uh, and uh, if you need anything from the Lord, maybe you got a burden that's, uh, that you know some, something in this world is just dragging you down. Bring it to the Lord. Maybe, maybe it's your family that you're concerned about. Uh, we want a burden for them, for for them to be saved, but but we can't let it destroy us, right? So maybe you've got a, some something you want. As Jimmy said earlier, bring your family to the altar. Bring your bring your greatest needs to the altar. Your sicknesses, uh, your 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 loss, your hurting. Bring them to the altar. God's able. God's able to to lift those burdens. To lift those burdens. Does anybody need to pray tonight? Well, I, I feel like I do. I feel like I do. Anybody else like to join me at the altar? And we'll just pray. We'll pray. And as we come, if there's anybody here, you have a special need, you just come up here and, and hold your hand up and we'll pray with you. Whatever it is, we'll pray with you. God can, God can lift that burden from you. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, that you're able to uh, lift all our burdens, uh, take it off our shoulders, because you can carry it. You are a burden bearer, and I praise you for it. And I ask you, God, as we come tonight, Lord, we, we want the burden of Christ, a burden for a lost, a burden for a church, a burden for, uh, uh, for, for the Word of God to have free course. And these burdens are, are good burdens. They're burdens that will move us in the right direction. But God, let us throw away the burdens of sin and throw off the weights of sin and all the things that would drag us down. God, please, take these things from us so we can walk for you and carry our cross. I love you and I ask you, Lord, if there's anybody here have a, a special need tonight, I pray God that they would accept Christ and put their trust in you. I love you and I ask this in Jesus' name. Is there somebody here tonight? Maybe you've got a special need. You just want to lift your hand. Say, say pray for me. I need prayer. I ain't going to point you. God bless you. Would there be another? I just need prayer. Bless your heart. Would there be another anywhere? I just have a need. I have a special need. Anybody, God bless you. Something I need from God. God bless your heart. Somebody else something I need. I know it's missing in my life. God bless you. God bless you. Someone else. I've got a heavy burden. Pray for me. Anybody else? Anybody else before we pray? Let's all bow and pray together. God, I pray for the hands that were lifted tonight. I pray, Lord Jesus, that each and every one of us can see the see the fact that we can turn our troubles and trials and even give our sin to Christ. He'll nail it to the cross and forgive us of everything we ever done wrong. He'll forgive us of every uh, evil thought, every, every bad deed, every bad word, everything we've ever done. He'll forgive us for it immediately. And I know you can do that. I pray for the hands that were lifted. Lift those burdens, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, take it to the Lord in prayer, right? Well, uh, I need to talk to the deacons just for a couple minutes after after service.
and uh, I, I like to get to the door, back door and shake your hand as you, as you leave as well. So uh, Wayne dismisses him prior if you would. Bye bye, head. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, for this another chance you've given us, Lord, to be back, Lord, in your house tonight, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your precious word, dear Lord, and Lord, for the man that brought it, dear Lord. We ask you, Lord, to go with us, Lord, as we go out, Lord, into this world. Just, Lord, give us strength let our light shine, Lord, among a dying world, dear Lord. Lord, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. And Lord, it's through you and by you that we have our being, dear Lord. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.